But when I watch the episodes, I do tend to dislike him a little bit. And I just have to remind myself that he's going through a difficult time. Hello, and welcome to Happily Ever Reality. I am so glad you're here. You guys, I've mentioned this a few times in some other videos, but I really thought when the Sister Wives tell-alls were over, I was going to be out of Sister Wives content. I thought I was really going to be done with talking about the show unless I went and like did rewatches of older episodes or talked about the book. I wasn't sure what I was going to do or if I was going to do any more about that show. But it has not been an issue because with the Brown children being active on social media and now Cody's ex-wives being on social media, there is still plenty to talk about. If you don't know already, which I'm sure all of you do, Peyton is out there just doing lives, streaming out there public in the, he's out in the social media world, but Gwendolyn has a Patreon account. She does share some of her videos here on YouTube, so you can see some of them here, but she shares a little bit more on her Patreon. If you're not familiar with how it's set up, she does commentary on the show episodes. My issue with it is you have to sit and watch the episode along with her. So it's not as if you're just getting her talking about it after she's watched it. She's actually going and you need to like watch the show along with her. And you can watch it on a separate screen or in a separate window on your computer. But I just haven't actually sat down and done that. At the end of the commentary for the episodes, though, she does Q&As where she answers questions that have been submitted by subscribers to her Patreon. So that's where it gets interesting. You know, when we watch the tell-alls on TLC, we've all been really disappointed that they're not answering the questions we want to have asked. We're not getting the answers we want. In this situation, there are questions from viewers of the show, subscribers to her Patreon. So they're actually pretty good questions. So when I'm watching, I skip to the Q&As. Now we have Peyton out there talking and Gwendolyn and now McKelty. I have not subscribed to her Patreon yet. I, I'm probably going to do it, but I haven't just sat down and done it yet. If you've subscribed to it already, let me know what you think. If I had to do Gwendolyn or, or McKelty, which one do you think is going to be better? I think for a while I'll do both. But anyway, that is that. That's what we're going to talk about today. Gwendolyn and some of her Q&As. But before I go any further, I do want to let you guys know that starting next week on January 29th, it is time to start the new season of 90 Day Fiance The Other Way. That is my favorite 90 Day Fiance spinoff. So if you are interested, you can come back on Monday to talk about that. And if you don't like that, if you're not into that show, that's okay. You can skip that video. I will definitely still be talking about Sister Wives and the Brown family. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Gwendolyn posted the season 17 episode six reaction video. I just got done watching the Q&A at the end, which is the part I'm gonna talk about in here. Uh, the one thing I thought that was really interesting and I was happy to actually hear her say was she knows it's her dad's fault. And she's talking about when Cody was accusing Christine of talking bad about him. You know, that was Cody's big thing. Like, she's putting this all in the kids' heads. Gwendolyn is like, nah, no, that's not true. I was the most vocal. I was the one who was saying the most about dad not being around. It was me more than anyone else. But it really wasn't my fault. And that was what I liked hearing her say. She kept saying it was dad. But if he wanted to blame someone, it was more me than mom. But what I liked was hearing her say it was dad. He was the reason all of this was happening. It was his lack of involvement. It was the fact that he wasn't showing up. It was his fault. All of this was going on. It wasn't mine. It wasn't mom's. It was his. But if he wanted to blame someone, I was the person saying the most. So I did I did find it interesting because really when you're watching the show, Gwendolyn wasn't brought up a lot. So that was not something... That wasn't something I knew. I didn't know that Gwendolyn was sort of talking to Christine about it and having a problem with it. It's it's not brought up during season 17. So that was a little bit of information we didn't have. But I'm happy to hear her say, you know, it was really her dad's fault because it was. And what I think about when she's saying that is actually Isabel. So if you think back to the time in the show where Isabel was having her surgery and right before the surgery... She did a confessional where she talked about wanting Cody to be present and she wanted him to be there for the surgery, but he couldn't be because there were other children. About and I'm not the only kid that he has to make sure is safe during this pandemic. 
I do. I, it sucks. It sucks that it can't be there. I feel like these children have been taught that it's selfish to want one-on-one -on -one attention from him because there are other kids and they always have to think about the other people. I think they've been taught that they're being selfish when they need his attention or they need him to be there. The only kids that aren't being taught that seem to be Robin's kids. And you know what? I hope they realize that that's not healthy. You, when you're a kid, you need your parents' attention. You need your parents to show up for the big moments, the milestones, the surgeries, the medical procedures. I hope they know they're not selfish. And when Gwendolyn was talking, that was what I kept thinking. She knows. She knows that what happened wasn't right. During the Q&A, Gwendolyn is asked a question about how often Truly goes to Robin's house and if Truly ever had a room there. Before I tell you what she says, I do want to point out something funny that she does. Gwendolyn will read the questions and they're submitted, you know, by people who subscribe to her Patreon, which means they're fans of the show. And a lot of them will use nicknames for Cody and Robin. Of course, the most common nickname for Robin is Sobbin because of her crying all the time. Well, Gwendolyn will read the question and actually read that nickname. She will call her Sobbin while she's reading it. And she doesn't comment. She just reads the question, says Sobbin, and then goes on and answers it. And of course, she says Robin. But there's just something about her reading it and not reacting that I find very entertaining. Okay, I shouldn't say that she didn't react at all. There is one question where she's called Sobbin and Gwendolyn sort of stops and says, well, that's a popular nickname. So she does acknowledge it, but it's just when she's reading them and she doesn't stop, I'm just really surprised. I, and I think it's just because I don't expect it. Like if it was my family, I wouldn't use the nicknames. I would use their real names, but Gwendolyn reads it just as it is. Gwendolyn does answer the question and she gives us some information that is kind of interesting. She says that about half of the time that Truly was going over to Robbins, they were filming. So they wanted to show that, you know, Cody was active in Truly's life and that Truly was coming over there. But I'm thinking to myself, you know, when I watched the show, I didn't feel like we saw Truly there that often. So I'm wondering, did they film a lot and we just didn't see it? We only got to see a little bit. I definitely recall Truly going to spend time with Janelle and Savannah more than Truly going over to spend time at Robin's house. Yeah, I'm so glad to have Truly over. I think Truly is such a cool kid. You can have these adult level conversations with her and you forget she's 11. It's just fun to have her over. I thought they put more of an emphasis on the visit with Janelle than they did the visits with Cody. A little later in the Q&A, there's another question about truly visiting at Robin's house. And Gwendolyn says that there are so few visits that Christine is starting to say stuff about her not going. So I, again, I don't think any of us are surprised by that. I didn't expect Cody to suddenly have an interest in spending time with his kids. Like it's probably just what we all expect and that he doesn't see her hardly at all. During the Q&A, there ends up being a question where they ask Gwendolyn to elaborate more on the comments she had made about how she wanted Christine to leave Cody before they were in Vegas. And Gwendolyn explains it, and it's, it's really interesting. She says that when she was about five years old, she had saw Christine and Cody fighting. The fight ended. She asked her mom, are you divorcing dad? And Christine's response was, no, we're in love. And you know what's weird is I can almost hear Christine saying that, like, in her own voice. So I can envision Christine responding that way. But Gwendolyn says she knew that wasn't what love was. I wonder if we're going to hear more stories like that, where the kids say we knew it wasn't right, even when they were that little. But you know what? That was really insightful of Gwendolyn to recognize that that wasn't love. Not the kind of love where her mom needed to stay married to her dad. So I thought that was interesting. Even at that age, she could see that. And I wonder if the other kids all felt the same way. Gwendolyn ends up being asked a question about whether or not Cody is a narcissist. And I thought she gave a great answer. She pretty much says she doesn't know enough about it to answer that. And it's something that needs a diagnosis. I thought that was really a good answer. I think the word narcissism and narcissist are used a lot but like they're often used by people that aren't professionals who can diagnose someone. So, you know, it starts losing its meaning a little bit. It starts being overused. Is it possible he is one? Yeah, but you're not going to hear me say it on here because 
I don't know. I can't diagnose someone with something like that. I like to use words I feel very confident using. Like, Cody is annoying. He's rude. He's obnoxious. He's saying stupid stuff again. I'm really confident with those sorts of words. I think there's plenty of adjectives that aren't nice that we can all use for Cody Brown that don't require a diagnosis. Feel free to use them, guys. But I I try to stay away from narcissism because I just don't know that much about it. So I thought Gwendolyn gave a good answer. She does say that her dad kind of puts blinders on when it comes to his own faults. And he likes to give attention to people that give him attention, which is something we've just seen again and again on this show. So yeah, her Q&As are good. I think that she gives good responses. She doesn't share as much as Peyton does. She doesn't, you know go wild when she's talking. But I I do think she tries to be mindful of the fact that there can be consequences, uh, you know, to what she's saying, but still gives answers and doesn't hold back. I mean, you guys, if she wanted to protect her dad, she could just avoid answering all of this or just give the answers that Cody would like. But she doesn't. She answers in a way that I think seems pretty truthful. I can't help but wonder what Cody Brown is doing right now. We know based on those tell-alls, he has to be in control. He has to be in control of the narrative. He wants to be sure that everyone is talking about how great he is. And we've seen him cracking the last few seasons. I bet this is unbearable. I bet having his kids talk about him and letting the world know how it really is. And they're basically confirming what we think. I, I guess there's a part of me that's really surprised. We're getting basically like a, yeah, you guys are all right. He really does have a favorite. He doesn't spend time with us. You know, he stopped being a good dad years ago. They're confirming what we're all thinking. I bet Cody is just freaking out right now. I wish we could see Cody. I wish we could hear Cody's response, but I do think it would be awful. I think he would say really mean things about the kids that are talking about him. So that's the only reason I wouldn't want to hear because I don't want him to do any more awful things to his kids than he's already done. So maybe he should just keep his mouth closed and not say anything about this, but I bet he is freaking out. So that is all for today. I have not subscribed to McKelty's channel or Patreon yet. I'm going to probably go do it, maybe do a video on that later this week, but let me know what you guys think. Are you watching any of these? Have you um, joined any of the Patreons? Let me know in the comments and come back to Happily Ever Reality if you want to talk more about the Browns and other reality TV shows.